Hey everybody, welcome back to Adam Makes Beer. And today we're gonna be discussing how we carbonate our beer at Cartridge. Now up front, just for any clarification, I've had some people get upset with me at different times over this. There are many ways to carbonate beer. You can spund beer, meaning you can put a beer that is wrapping up fermentation in a sealed tank and allow it to naturally carbonate. You can naturally carbonate in cans, bottles, different things like that. Today what we're gonna be showing is how we essentially force carbonate our beer in a bright tank here at Cartridge. I think it's a pretty typical practice, but everything, everybody does things a little bit differently. And so what we're gonna show right quick is our carbstone build. The uh, stone portion, the gray portion, Joshua point out the stone portion, please. Thank you. Um, is held together by these, those two gaskets on either side, those tannish uh, iodine uh, stained gaskets. And what we're going to be doing with that stone is that stone, think about it like a, I don't know, like the bubbler that you put in your aquarium, except uh, a lot more expensive because it's made out of stainless steel, all right? Um, Josh was just putting that all together out of our iodine bath that we have. We use iodine as a uh, longer term soak for things. So we just don't dunk things in, take them out and assemble. Um, but anyhow, uh, all those small parts for that carbonation stone will be shook through our, what do we call it? Sonic cleaner. And so we will get all those small parts with the sonic cleaner, which is, which is effective at helping to get that sanitizer into all those really small nooks and crannies in that carbonation stone. So anyhow, where we're at right now is Josh is blowing CO2 through that carbonation stone. It's sometimes a little bit surprising how much liquid those things can hold. Um, but anyhow, um, he's had it, the he's had the whole thing in iodine through the build. And now he is, he's pushed the iodine out of that stone and then he's just hitting the exterior of all that with some ISO, he'll blow that out again with CO2, and then he'll insert it into the side port of the tank. Kind of the next step is us purging that tank of atmosphere with CO2. Uh, we can link that video where we discuss that, where we talk about sanitizing and purging a bright tank. We can link that in the description below, some box up here. It depends on how good I get at doing this whole thing. Anyhow, once we get our beer transferred into the tank, we are going to have that, we're gonna seal that tank, and then we're going to start applying CO2 through the carbonation stone. Every carbonation stone rig like that has what is known as like a wetting pressure, or the amount of pressure it takes behind the stone in order to get CO2 to start coming through the stone, all right? For our particular rig, it's about five PSI. So if I want to get nine to 10 PSI into that tank, as far as overall pressure, I have to have my gas gauge anywhere from 14 to 16, all right? So what we'll do is we'll get that beer transferred into the bright tank. It's cold, it's ready to roll. The tank is sealed and then we'll start applying CO2 pressure through that stone. And what I do is, there's a little backflow preventer so beer can't come back into the CO2 line, but I put my ear up to the tank and I start cracking that valve until I can hear that CO2 start popping through uh, that check valve and consequently that stone. Over the course of the next several hours, the pressure in that tank will rise and it'll get us up to roughly the area where we need to be for carbonation. We will check that with our Zamenagel or Nagel, depending how you like to you know, name things like this. This allows us to tell how much carbonation is in the beer. It reads both temperature and pressure, and then we can utilize the chart to see how much gas is in solution in this beer. Anyhow, that's really the big picture of how we handle things. Most of the beers that we do here, we will bring up to about 
2.5, 2.6 volumes of CO2. Beers that I'm not gonna be putting through the canning line, sometimes I'll get them a little, a little higher than that, sometimes 2.7, 2.8. I, sometimes I like some of that brighter CO2 to kind of lift out of the glass. Um, anyways, we make a fair amount of German lager here and sometimes I think that a little bit of extra CO2 helps to brighten those beers up and lift them to the, uh, to the palate a little bit uh, more effectively. But anyhow, that's what we're doing as far as carbonation here. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you do something differently, if you've tried different things, please let me know. This is what we're doing as our practice right now. I always try to keep us learning new things, evolving, because ultimately that's what we're actually doing here. So anyways, all things like that. Josh, are we done? Uh, bye everybody.